Welcome. Welcome to Shade, to Shade in the City. city. I'm your girl, Trees. It's no. And today we are getting into our review of Before the 90 Days, Season 6, Episode 6, Dangerous Liaisons. Don't understand what this has to do with the... But you know, you know, y'all have one or two good episodes and now you just... You know what? I can't get mad at them that they, you know, can't be super creative. They have a lot of franchises. They got a lot of shows to make up names for. They like, listen, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. I see you something like a key line from the actual episode instead of trying to be creative in just my thoughts. But anyway, guys, so if you haven't already, please make sure that you've hit that like button. And that subscribe button. And y'all, let's get into this review because, you know, we got a new a new couple on here. Finally, we see Christian and Cleo. Um, Riley is just the misfit that he is. So yeah, let's get into it. We missed a couple people this episode though. Right. Let's get shady. Jasmine and Gino seem to have made up and she told him that she was going to go run some errands. Um, and apparently this is code word for I'm going to call my ex on FaceTime. And, uh, cry and talk about you. Because that's exactly what she did. She went outside for a walk, sat on a bench and called um, about Gino. Yeah. Um, called her ex on uh, FaceTime. And I was telling Nels I said, I because I remember I was so floored by the situation that I texted her and I said, how is it that Jasmine can have this whole relationship with her ex, but if Gino even thought, but then she actually answered the question for me. And she says that she's mature enough to have these relationships and friendships with her exes um, and that Gino isn't. Just not honest enough. Um, so... Basically, this girl says that she feels lucky as hell that Dane um, is on a family va uh, vacation while Gino is in Panama, um, while Gino's in Panama, because she was worried that they might cross paths. Well, what were you thinking, putting them in the same building? You know, sh where you sleep, people. <sighs> now, because you know, that's Gino really bold. That just goes to show how bold she is. Yeah. Apparently, Gino doesn't know. Um, nothing about this man, but she, um, she is sure telling all her business to him. Dane knows yeah, all about Gino. Gino. Don't know about him. Huh? I said, we think Gino don't know about him. Well, even if he does, Dane knows a hell of a lot more about Gino than Gino yes. knows. About I, him. Yeah, you, you got that right. So production does ask, what if Gino was talking to his ex? She said, over my dead body. Okay. Um, basically says that she's not a hypocrite for talking to her ex. She is just more trustworthy. Okay. While you're lying though. Uh, now she's on the phone crying with her ex, but you know, he actually may have offered some good advice to her and told her, y'all need to go to some therapy. He did, but he also told her how deserving and how he hopes she finds someone that can truly pour into her and love on her um, like she needs to be loved. Just saying. Well, was he wrong in saying that? No, I'm not saying it was wrong. I'm just saying that, you know. You think she he was speaking about himself? I, I think that he's speaking of anybody that's not Gino. Because he knows Jasmine can do better. We all know Jasmine can do better. Now, she said that she wants to follow Dane's advice. And basically, she wants to go get Gino to work out. And she's just happy that they're not arguing. I'm sorry. He's just happy that they're not arguing and actually enjoying the day. So she had him doing some squats and so that he can work on his motion in the ocean. His pelvic movements. That man said that he's a wild beast. 
but we all know better than that because Jasmine talks about how unwild he really is. Okay. Yeah. Um, and basically details that we don't want. Um, right. <laughs> Um, and he said that sometimes he just loses his desire when they argue. So she said that that's not the case. She said that's not the case all the time. You know, sometimes that they don't even argue and he doesn't want to touch her still. But she said she's willing to do anything and ask him, um, what's his sexual desires? Girl, why are you always asking about his sexual desires? There's other things in the world and in a relationship other than sex. Well, that goes to show how much she thinks her value, where her value lies, clearly. She can't cook for him. He don't eat her food. She don't like, so I guess that's the only thing of value that she feels she offers to him is her great looks and some sex. That oh, would, just, if, And if that's the one thing that he's no longer doing, that would make you feel insecure. Just saying. Well, he said just no daily arguing. Um, so she tried to get him to make a deal that if she stopped arguing so much that they'll have sex more and he completely changed the subject. Yeah, he brushed that off. He was like, yeah. I would just feel that you just didn't want me and... Oh, yeah. See, um, I mean, granted, you know, they're in a relationship and I get it and sometimes you go, I guess, go through periods, but it ain't too many times you're going to reject me before. You ain't got... To... I'm going to go ask... You once. live in a whole other country. You would think that she would be knocking it down a few times a day while you're there. Esmond took Gino out to um dancing to meet his friend, meet her friends. Jesus Christ. Um, and her friends actually think that for his age, he doesn't look bad. Just not their cup of tea. Mm. Maybe he looked different on camera. No, I think I think Gino looked like he looked. Maybe they just maybe they're just different in Panama. Maybe they don't got a lot of options. Well, I don't know, because Dane ain't bad looking. So I don't know. Dane well, anyways. Bad on uh, the eyes, y'all. Yeah, because I was about to say, maybe they just, you know, and that's suitable out there, but no. Um, So her friend asked her, at the table, girl, what happened to the blood plugs? Did you use some things yet? Gino. I'm happy I missed this part. <laughs> Gino immediately turned red. Okay, <laughs> and Jasmine asked him if he's ever had anal sex before, and he said no. Now this let's is a discussion in front of her friends. Her friends brought up the butt plugs in front of them. Oh God, there's a reason why they're friends. But he was like, "Yeah, let's just change the subject. Like, let's not even go into that." So her friend wanted to know how, you know, he's doing with the long distance, how they handle it, and has he ever cheated on Jasmine? He said he never would, and he hopes. The same for her because today she was talking to some guy. He said earlier that day he felt something was off, so he confronted her and she admitted that she video chatted with Dane. Oh, okay. Well, at least she's honesty. At least she was honest. Um, but he said what's really bothering him is that she was hiding it in the first place. Mm -hmm. so she tries to say, change the subject and say you know what like we're here to dance we're, had, we're here to have a good time but he can't let it go so he asked her friend Yira about Dane and she told him that they dated right before her and Gino but now they're just really good friends and he's feeling some type of way because he knows Jasmine would not allow him to do that and because she's hiding it so Mm -hmm. and wait till he find out he lives in the same building that that, that Gina was paying for mm. and can probably barely pay for so then we get over to Nels's favorite um, character on the show Riley we know um, when she says my favorite it's actually not my favorite <laughs> <laughs> so Riley is planning on meeting Violet's family but he's first uh, going on a detour uh, to this surprise that Violet has for him so Violet ends up surprising him with a trip to the store so he can buy some traditional clothes. And she said there's a few places that she wants to take Riley, but he has to know where, you know, have to have proper garments to get in. And she, yeah, she just ain't walking around with Riley looking like look right now. So her homegirl apparently runs the shop. So her and Violet, um, as he's, you know, she's measuring him and getting his, you know, 
sizes or whatever. They are discussing Riley in his face in their native language, which we all know is a big pet peeve. Or that's different. I'm over there. Oh, okay. So, however, Violet lets him know that she said he was ugly. So you don't have to question what I said. I said you were ugly. Now, she... yo, I love Violet. <laughs> I love her. She said, "Love." Her. Um, now, Violet claims that she is. Was... Is that really what she said? She said, "Yeah." Yes, that's what I said. <laughs> um, and Violet claims that she was joking, but Riley is clearly upset and wants to leave now. So, you know, on their way out, Violet gets a text from some guy with his shirt off, apparently, which this is what Riley says. And he demands to see her phone. Uh, Violet tells him it's a friend and that it's her personal business. She don't ask him who he's talking to and they are not married. And basically this obviously upsets Riley even more because he claims to not, not to be talking to anyone else. And so he gets mad and walks off. And then or, Violet, or act like he was walking off. Right. So then Violet finally explains to Riley that the guy in her phone is someone she was hooking her friend up with. She pulled the whole boy. She she do what the she do what the devil do. Yeah, that's but my homeboy. I like boy. you. I like you, Violet, but that's my homeboy. The lie. You better believe in dudes use that story all the time. We supposed to believe it. I guess, right? Um, so he asked, why didn't she just come clean? And she lets him know that it was none of his business. Violet says that she has feelings for Riley, but they're just dating. And the checking the phone is too much for her. I said, you better, you better, Violet, okay? Do not get this. You thought, oh, because I'm a Vietnamese woman, you was going to come over here and just tell me what to do and how to do it. Oh, Violet said, you got another thing coming. I, <laughs> I like her a lot. Um, so then he brings up her ex-husband and tells her that she has too many secrets. And Violet lets him know, again, we're not married. Get over it and fix his face before they get to his mama's house, uh, to get to her mama's house. Yeah, and that's what she said. And so then they get to uh, Violet's mother's home and she's concerned about Riley losing his temper in front of her family. So her daughters, I I got their names, but I can't pronounce to yet, I believe it was, and bow. Um, seem very excited to meet Riley. They sit down. He presents them with gifts. But mom is looking at him sideways because she's like, who comes? She's like, in our culture, you don't come over here without no gift from the parent, especially when you want to marry my daughter. Like, what is going on? And I was just like, well, that is kind of... I, I, I feel can't... like... I feel like any episode we've seen of 90 Day, everybody always brings something over for the parent. You know what, though? I was even going to say not even 90 Day because it's not even just that culture. Right. We've seen shows here where they brought flowers for the girl that they were dating. They brought flowers for the mom as well. Right. Maybe something even for the dad. Like, it's the parents. Like, that's who you yeah. need to impress. So, so that obviously rubbed mom the wrong way. So um, like Riley. Oh, you funny. Then uh, mom brings up his bad temper and how this affects her daughter. And she has to see Violet upset and crying. Um, and he says that, you know, when he just basically doesn't want to be with a liar. So then her daughter calls him out and she's like, well, first of all, um, that's very strong. And I feel like that's a little disrespectful. Because if you really felt that way, why did you come all the way over here? And I was like, okay. I said, so not only is Violet out here being strong, but she out here raising strong young women. You you better. Okay, I love it. So then- Violet, ain't have, Violet didn't even have to say nothing. Right. Um, and so then her and her mother start to talk in their native language um, and start to talk about uh, Riley. And her mother lets her know that if you marry this man, you're going to be miserable. And she's like, and I, I suggest you leave him alone. This is not who we are. We're kind people and we ain't got time to basically. She said Vietnamese women are faithful. We ain't jerks. I said, right. You better tell them. And yeah, but, and so they, you know, kind of, he promises to basically do better. Um, And I think Violet said, and I promise to believe that you'll do better. And that was, yeah. Violet said, I'm a be Violet. That's just what it is. I love it. I Violet, mean, is, Violet is hands down my favorite on the show. Like out yeah. of 
out of many seasons. Yeah, no. I really like Violet. A new cast member. Her name is Statler. She's 33 from Irving, Texas. Apparently, she has a thing for bugs. And it's been that way since she was like five or six. She also has what she said, real ADHD. She said a lot of people got it, but she got real ADHD. Well, um, she said that she likes the bugs because she feels like no one notices them. And that's how she feels. She feels like she can relate because no one notices them. You know what she knew? I ain't going to talk shit. Mm -hmm. um, now, she says the ADHD doesn't make it easy for her to even work from home. Okay, Max, she can focus on work is 15 minutes. Who is paying you? And why would you put this on TV? She might be They're they gonna fire your ass. She said she'd be doing laundry. She'd be like fishing, playing with her cat and shit. Lady. Uh, well, I'm not gonna lie. I definitely do laundry and all that stuff. Well. Do you tell your job? No. Okay. It's all over TV, ma'am. Okay. I don't do my laundry when I work from home. <laughs> no, it, you know it's not even that because that's a quick little thing and then you can get back to your back day. to work when you, but when you say i can only you start playing with the cat eight, no 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 when you say out of eight hours a day i can only focus for 15 minutes i can only get 15 minutes of work done i think what she means is like hear me out from someone who's a little scatterbrained myself i think what she means is that because i do that that's why i said i can relate i'll get up and I'll get distracted. I'll do the laundry. And then I'll see, oh, there's some dishes I can put in a dishwasher. And then I'll, oh, let me go take a shower. And then I'll be like, oh, let me go back to work. And then I'll work for another 30 minutes. And then I'm going to put stuff in the dryer. Guess, guess what? That ain't what she said. Though. Okay. What she said was I can only focus 15 minutes. Well, see, you know what? I call that multitasking, though. I wouldn't call, you know. She said she always felt like a disappointment. And coming out didn't make it any easier. Um, but as she got older, it did get a little bit easier. She said she wanted to explore her sexuality. So she did with a lot of women in a lot of different places. And she's a self-proclaimed freak. Um, but she said that she needs love and it just wasn't working for her. So she switched, um, her location on her dating app to England because she likes English accents. I said, okay, what is, okay, there you go. You smart, you loyal. Right. And that's how she met her girlfriend, Dempsey, who's 28 and lives in Darlington, England. Um, she said that she messaged her and Dempsey messaged her back with a voice note. And she was immediately she was immediately in love. Um, now, they've been talking every day for uh, seven months. And now she's flying out to see her and believes that this is a forever thing, even though. Dempsey doesn't know that, apparently. Um, this girl plans to move there after two weeks if everything goes good. And Dempsey didn't get the memo yet. Yeah, no, um, you can't just be moving to people's houses that you just met. That's just, you know. Apparently, this is a thing for her. Right. Um, so she's going out with her, um, her friend to a dessert place called Better Than Sex. They actually have one in Florida I wanted to go to. Um, apparently, this place she's uh, wanted to try. Now, she said normally she talks to Dempsey almost every day while they're both awake. But lately, Dempsey has been on vacation in Thailand with her family. And it's cut down to like a few minutes every couple of days. And it has not been easy. So they're supposed to be meeting each other at the airport in London when Dempsey flies back and she flies there. And she's looking forward to possibly having sex in the airport but that's something she's never done before oh okay you're just meeting her and that's the first thing you want to do okay um she well, she was I, thought she's, I thought she said she was meeting the ex in the airport maybe i was wrong maybe I well heard. um she didn't say she was going to the ex did ask to oh um, okay. so her friend wants all the juicy details and asks if they've been sexting um and she said no Dempsey is basically the complete opposite of her and she's worried that they won't really have good physical chemistry now her friend asked her since she moves so fast are you thinking about taking it slow this time and she said no absolutely not she's in a whole nother country 
Um, and if things go well, then in two weeks, I will be coming back, packing up all my shit, selling what I can't pack and moving there. Well, and that's how you do it, I guess. Um, which that she just wants to get over to England so she could just have her have plethora her. of English women. Right. That that's exactly what it is. Plethora. That's the word I was. <laughs> um, now this concerns the hell out of her friend because this is not her first go round. Apparently, she had her heart broken in England before about a year ago. She says she went over there. The girl wanted her to move there, and then when she came back to get all her stuff. The girl told her they were moving too quickly and then she dumped her. Uh, they still talk every now and then and it scares the hell out of her that this, um, um, that, you know, that this could be the this same situation. This situation is so, so close and similar mm -hmm. to, to the last one that it makes the last one. But the girl asked her if, you know, she could, apparently the ex asked her if she could meet her at the airport in London and Statler did consider it but told her no. Now her friend um, just told her, girl, just be careful. That's 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 one of those friends where it's like you really just can't even worry about it. You just got to be like, you know what? Because you're going to do whatever the hell you want to do. Just be careful, please. Just, just take care of yourself, girl. Now, um, she's packing up for her flight the next day and she's super overwhelmed. She says she hasn't talked to her in a few days, so she's feeling pretty anxious, but she is focused on the end goal getting those plethora of women in England. Now, on the way to the airport, she got a text from Dempsey that she may not make her flight. And she doesn't know if this is true or not and whether she's just having second thoughts. But she's still moving forward and felt much better once she got on the plane. Uh, Statler gives me that she um, is a little naive and uh, she doesn't learn from past mistakes. So we're going to have to watch her um, and I think she might be too much. So um, then we hop over to the Philippines where we see David is waking up next to Sheila. He still ain't showered. Um, and is very happy that they had sex after two years. Um, well, did they though? Well, uh, I don't, we don't need to get into the ins and outs of the deeps in that. Um, it just, you know, they, they, they smashed. Okay. Um, and he's very good with his hand. They had sexual activities. Look, uh, whatever. I'm not getting into that. Now, Sheila said David is very quiet during sex. He surprises her with flashcards to teach her sign language, uh, which she likes and thinks this is a very cute idea. And I thought that was cute as well. And then he tells Sheila to look through his phone um, because this is something that apparently she wanted to do. You know, we obviously know that she's a little bit insecure and she has no problem admitting that as well. And so she's like, yeah, um, I want to see who he's been talking to. And apparently he's been talking to some girl and asked her if she had a boyfriend. And he said, oh, because other people, it's the friend. It was the homeboy. It was the homeboy. Y'all got to you. I swear. Um, so, and basically Sheila let him know that well, he need to stop checking for his homeboy, okay? She don't like that. So Sheila takes David to this marketplace to go shopping, and he isn't very impressed um, and says it's very different. He is turned off by all the heads and the eyes and the legs that he witnessed hanging around. Um, and she then makes him try some food. I think it was like squid, like dry squid or something like that. Um, so David said he hasn't really been eating since he got to the Philly. He loved to eat. He said, I like to eat, but... Ever since I got there, I don't really want to eat none of this. He said, I ain't been hungry. You know what? You know what got me? What took me out? What? He said, I work at a grocery store. And it always smells so like fresh it. and so clean. And he said, it ain't nothing like this. Right. You ain't in Kansas anymore, homie. Okay. Um. So, but he does love walking through the streets with Sheila and holding her hand. He tells her he wants to talk more so they can get to know each other. And then he asked about her last relationship. And she says that, you know, it was a guy from the Philippines and he cheated on her with some woman in Manila. Um, and then she asks David about his ex and he tells her that, you know, they were together for like four years. Um, and I guess the big thing for Sheila is she knew how to sign. And, you know, and I guess that makes her obviously feel more insecure. 
um, which David reassured, like he basically is like, okay, let's move on. We no longer talking about exes, but he does say in the confessional that it was easier to communicate um, with his ex. And so hopefully uh, Sheila will get on. I don't know. I don't know how I felt about that. I felt like you don't want to start the conversation on the ex. Now, when I start probing about your ex, it's a problem. Now, now we ain't talking about exes. Now we ain't talking about exes, right? The hell. Well, don't get it started then, homie. So Christian is in the air, getting fucked up. You know, uh, so you much do. so that the staff has cut him off. Okay. Cleo said she ready to go get daddy. Okay. She looked in the mirror and she said she is serving fish. I said, oh, oh all right, Cleo. <laughs> If you either know what it means or you don't, I ain't about to get into it. Oh, okay. um, so she is nervous going to the airport, though. Um, she said it's normally overstimulating for her, but she brought a few things to help soothe herself should she need it. Um, and while she's waiting for him, she's just getting more and more anxious. And when they finally saw each other, he didn't even give a damn. He kissed her in the airport. I um, like that. Yes. I he said like any that. hesitancy or doubt that he had, it melted away. She is beautiful. I said, all right. All right, Christian. Um, so they're headed back to the Airbnb and there's some awkwardness between them. Christian feels that they just need some time to warm up to each other. Um, and it really may have something to do with the fact that Cleo feels a little anxious about the fact that. Christian has never dated a trans woman and she feels that she needs to be um, as womanly as possible. Um, so they get to the place and he tries to play with the clap that play with the cats. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't too fond of the cats. And they're really not feeling it. And you know, he said it's okay. Um I ain't a dog daddy. person. He said, he said, I ain't their daddy anyway. You can call me Uncle Christian. This completely turned uh, Cleo off. She like, what you, what you mean? She said, no, you're going to be the daddy. And he you like, wait a minute. You have to be the daddy. Um, and basically he says he's ready to go to bed. And he says that he's never been with a trans woman before. So he needs time to adjust. And he just wants to build a foundation first. But he is still worried about disappointing her. But I don't think it really made a difference because he still turned his ass over and was ready to go to sleep. And she's noticing um, the mixed signals, but she's hoping that she's just overthinking, like, you know, us Virgos do. Um, but she says she'll know if that's not the case, um, if he doesn't change within like a day. I said, oh, girl, only a day? Okay, well, all right. Yeah, she's not playing. Quick little short little timeline. You better change it. She's like, you already kissed me, so you already hit one base. Let's move it along, sir. Yeah. So um, I'm actually proud to see, like I said, I was happy when he came out like he did, but I do feel like, you know, one minute he's like, oh, let me kiss you. Next minute he's like, oh girl, I'm just trying to get in this bed and go to sleep and I don't want to, you know, but he did compliment her on her nighty. Um, I thought that, so I feel like it is, it is giving mixed signals, but I feel like he's trying, which I can appreciate because I totally thought he was going to come over here and waste her time. Um, And he may still do that, but who knows? So Thank you guys for tuning in to another review of yes, Before the 90 you. Days. If you have not already, please make sure that you hit that like button. You comment. You subscribe. And you hit the notification bell. And please make sure that you're following us on all the platforms, the TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, IG. And guys, make sure that you're sharing us with your friends and please, please help us as we're only like maybe 30 or something away from 500. So we need the help. Share us. Because sharing is caring. And we appreciate it and love you guys. And we will catch you next week for another review. Have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye.